the decision, we're going to war with Iraq. I said, we're going to war with Iraq, why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. He said, I guess it's like, we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk and picked up a piece of paper. He said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs in the Secretary of Defense office today. And he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq. I told Andrew not you were when they came to the third. They were one million years ahead of us already. They were already one million years ahead of us when they landed on the earth 450,000 years ago. For 250,000 years, they did the work themselves and left us alone. They didn't even bother with us. And then 200,000 years ago, they decided they were going to mess with us and they started genetically tinkering us and they created the Homo sapiens sapien, which is who we are right now. What's in charge here? This boat needs a captain. Look, I... <laughs> We interrupt Beach Judge for an emergency broadcast. A sudden environmental catastrophe has rocked Springfield. Every consumer cell phone will be part of a nationwide emergency alert test. Welcome back to the coolest channel on YouTube, man. Look, got a crazy cool video for y'all in store today. Just need one favor. Go ahead and smash that like button. Share this with your friends and families. Leave those notifications on. Our, la our live last night was super lit. Yo, we had like, what, 3,600 people come in there. I mean, 6,300 people come in there and yo it was up but look man make sure y'all got y'all notifications on so y'all can catch this next live uh we're gonna be doing tomorrow at hmm, let's say 8 30 mst for my night hours but look man uh just know if you're going through a tough time we're going through this thing called life together you never end it by yourself let's get it why is it that even though the earth spins at a thousand miles an hour at the equator goes around the sun at sixty six thousand miles per hour which travels through the universe at half a million miles per hour, which is expanding at over a million miles per hour, are we able to take a picture of the sky on the same day every year and never see changes in the stars, even for thousands of years? Why does Elon Musk say, you, you can, can tell, tell it's real because, because it looks so fake. fake? That's because it does look fake. Look how the Earth glitches out in the background, but the car doesn't. And see how the Earth supposedly looks from the International Space Station, which is 240 miles up. However, this was taken from only 170 miles. Do you see an issue here? It's just like the Red Bull Space Jump in the Mythbusters episode that used downward-facing fisheye lenses to create massive amounts of curvature, but the non-fisheye lenses from the capsule and the cockpit show flat horizons, which concur perfectly with weather balloon footage more than 20 miles up. Which, by the way, 20 miles high is roughly the size of the bulge that should be in the state of Kansas due to it being 413 miles wide. Here's what 20 miles up looks like. That would be a large bulge for something that is supposed to be flatter than a pancake. And by the way, Kansas is only the ninth flattest state in the U.S. How many pieces of flat land does it take to make a ball? Why when we look at the stars in December do we see the same stars that we see in June? We should be looking in two totally different directions. If ships sail over the curve of the Earth, why are we able to bring them back into view with high-powered lenses as if they merely sailed past the horizon of the eye's angular resolution? Why are we able to see things over long distances, which according to the formula for a ball with a circumference of 24,900 miles, should be thousands of feet below the curvature horizon? And now, with infrared technology, we are seeing things that should be miles below the horizon, if we truly lived on a ball. If Eratosthenes proved the Earth was a ball thousands of years ago with an experiment using shadows, why do experts say that his results should actually be the same on a flat Earth with a smaller local sun? If the sun barely looks bigger than the other stars from Saturn, why is it able to completely light it up so that we can see it from Earth? And if something nearly the size of the other stars can do that, why is the back side of Saturn not lit up by the billions of stars on the other side? And why are there dark sides to any objects in the solar system? If moonlight reflects the warm light of the sun, why is moonlight measurably cold? Why is it warmer in the shadows at night when it's the exact opposite of what we experience in the sunlight during the day? They've got alien technologies from all over the planet. They're trying to reverse engineer stuff. And if you notice, they talk about technology in general. And it is said that in the last 15, 20 years, 
we have quadrupled the technology from the previous 5,000 years combined. How could we do so much so fast? We cheated. If you didn't earn it, you stole it. Corporation and governments <laughs> will be able to systematically hack all the people. We humans should get used to the idea that we are no longer mysterious souls. We have the technology to hack human beings on a massive scale. Yeah, I mean, everything is being digitalized. You get what they're saying? They're saying hack human beings. So basically, they can hack your consciousness, like control you. Sounds weird to me. Sounds creepy, right? All right, bet. Let's get back to it. Y'all tracking? Let me know in the comments down below. And mom, who's in charge here? This boat needs a captain. Look, I. <laughs> We interrupt Beach Judge for an emergency broadcast. A sudden environmental catastrophe has rocked Springfield. Every consumer cell phone will be part of a nationwide emergency alert test. Now this test is going to be sent not only to your cell phones, but it's going to be sent to your radios, your TVs, probably any of your smart devices. And even if you usually have your phone on silent, this one you ain't going to be able to turn off. The timing and the date is interesting because the term 10-4, along with its meaning, is part of terms used in law enforcement. Beginning at 2.18 Eastern uh, Daylight Time, uh, we will initiate the test message that goes to cellular phones. Um, that will cause phones to uh, ring, very similar to... Hey, look, I was, I was, I don't know why I instinctively just like looked at the, uh, the calendar real quick. I had to peek real quick. <laughs> How many of y'all did the same thing? Look, I don't be playing. <laughs> if you've ever see, received a flash flood or an amber alert that also came through the same system, that's the wireless emergency alert system. So the, the phones will, uh, they buzz very loudly. Uh, they sound very similar. The sound that comes out is very similar to what you're used to hearing on the emergency alert system uh, at the beginning of alerts that are broadcast on radio and television. Um, the message, the text of the message will display right on the, on the uh, home screen or on the, the middle of the screen of the cell phone. Um, at the top of that, there will be a banner that will say presidential alert. That's the category of the type of alert that we're allowed to send nationwide. And then the text of the message will say text. This is only a test of the national uh, wireless emergency alert system and no action is, is needed. There was concern that Americans weren't necessarily watching radio and TV, uh, especially in the evenings, maybe. Uh, the new technology of the cellular phones was just coming online. It was suggested uh, that we figure out a way to be also, also be able to send alerts to cellular phones and all other devices as they come online. Some say it shows a spaceship orbiting the Earth. And if you think that's crazy, I should tell you, the video comes from NASA. It's the hottest tape on the American UFO circuit. Tape shot from the space shuttle Discovery. A white dot 200 miles above us. Some say it's proof of a UFO battle in orbit around Earth. I believe that's our zero four plane. Of course, our government says it's all balderdash, but it's enough to send the spirits of believers skyrocketing. We examined the videotape in our offices with hotshot UFO researcher Don Ecker. Ecker is a police detective in the Pacific Northwest who's now on the staff of UFO Magazine. Okay, here it is. You see it? Now watch it. Now as it gets up here, we'll make a right angle turn, shoot off into space, and something flashes past them. There. And whoosh. They're shooting stars. Shooting stars, my... That's no shooting star. That whatever that thing is took an evasive maneuver. There have been videotapes before, of course, but this simple footage is said to be much more convincing. Now, watch closely. There, beneath the shuttle, is planet Earth. Thunderstorms light up the night sky. But then something very curious happens. Watch this white dot. At first, it appears to be just a piece of space junk lost in orbit. Then it makes a right turn, accelerates, and appears to fly away. Oh, yeah. Run it back a little more. Okay, that's good. All right, now this thing is traveling this way. It suddenly makes a right angle turn and shoots into space. Right here. Now watch it. Now we're blowing this up to see. Right, it watch it. There it goes, and here comes the shot. They say this shot is the most remarkable thing of all on the tape. 
it could appear that the object turned sharply to avoid this white streak, which flies by exactly where the object had been a moment before. Something appears to be shooting at it. Because it, it anticipates something where it flashes into space. There we go. And a split second later, something flashes past it. NASA's official version is that the object is a piece of ice from wastewater the shuttle dumped on a previous orbit. They have no comment on what appears to be a shot streaking past it, or on how it could turn and fly off in another direction. Why is that not a piece of ice? Well, did you ever see a piece of ice do this? Do what? Watch it. <laughs> right. That's what I'm I'm, that's what I be saying too. That ah man, I have a hard time dealing. I'm sorry, yeah, I have a hard time dealing with that. Of like, you know, not not saying to believe everything, but just common sense, bro. You can see it. That's obviously not a piece of ice. Obviously, a piece of ice wouldn't move like that. You know, not at all. Like, ain't no way. That's an intelligent movement. I'm trying to tell you, it makes a right angle turn. It increases speed dramatically and shoots into space. There it goes. The tape itself was shot by one of the astronauts aboard the Discovery and beamed down to Earth live. It was picked up by a small cable television facility in Maryland where viewers recorded it, studied it, and where ufologists went wild. There's no way that the shuttle make a right angle turn, shoot off into space. This apparently is displaying a propulsion system that is not manufactured in Detroit. Look again, this could be a UFO smoking gun or just pieces of ice and space garbage in orbit. The speculation is here that there are anomalous objects that are observed entering orbit and something or someone is firing something at them. A spaceship doing a right hand turn. I, I'm telling you, some people, they had to tell you anything. They said they said a piece of ice, though. Like, can we agree, though? Like, can all of us, like, for humanity, can we just do this for us, man? Like, can we disagree on something that that, that, that wasn't a piece of ice, y'all? <laughs> can, can we do that? Let me know in the comments down below. This is wild. It could be fake. It could be anything else. But look, we can disagree. It's not a piece of ice. I ain't going to let that go. This is absolutely unbelievable. And it takes off now. Freaking out, wouldn't he? Yeah. Do you know all the scary things that have been happening at the Euphrates River? What's going on there? Okay, so the Euphrates River is actually located in the Middle East, and it's considered one of the longest rivers in the world. But it's actually drying up. Like, it's almost completely dry. But where the river is drying up, they're actually finding caves and different structures that have been under the river this entire time. But it's actually really scary that they're finding this. I don't get what's so scary about that. So what's crazy is the drying up of the Euphrates River is actually written in the Bible. And in the book of Revelations, chapters 9, 14 through 9, 15, it says, release the four angels bound to the great river euphrates and then it says the angels were released to kill a third of all mankind so what you're saying is when the river dries up it's basically the end of the world yeah and just to put that number in perspective a third of the world is 2.6 billion people and it's just super weird that they're finding all these caves under the euphrates river that's a lot of people Is that not freaky? Hey, that I ain't gonna hold you. That better be fake, though. Like, <laughs> you feel me? Like that, 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 that's too damn creepy to just be floating in the sky like that, my guy. 
you know that 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 reads bad intentions on it <laughs> that's not an abduction that's a we're gonna come eat you motherfuckers that's what ah. I feel. yeah where's the noise no Here comes another one. Oh my God. They're playing. No, they're not. I see that one's blinking. And now where do those other ones go? They're gone. Okay, I don't know. But that one's blinking. They're all blinking. There's no noise. You can hear a little bit of a jet. The fascinating answer was the guy saying that it's not in the public good for this to get up. Because the, the big speculation, there's a bunch of big speculations, but the big one has always been that we were genetically engineered. I mean, that's something that Zachariah Sitchin talked about. And so, so speculating right now, mm -hmm. just speculating, because it's driving me crazy. What do you think... If this is true, we're just saying, if this is true, if we're being visited by something, yeah, what could be so powerfully devastating that these keepers of the secrets have literally, all of them, pretty much stopped at the same pla place and talking with me and George, which is like, I am not for disclosure on this. There is something they're not telling us that is so heavy. But it also could be the genetic engineering thing, because there's a weird thing with human beings in the lower primates. The lower primates are all still around, you know, and there was a, a bunch of different kinds of humans that didn't make it, you know, Neanderthal and Denisovan, and there's a bunch of other ones that they keep discovering new ones. But God, there's a giant leap between us and the other primates, a weird one. Real weird. We vary so wildly in terms of how we look. We vary so wildly in the environments that we can live in. We have hyper intelligence in comparison to everything else that's on the planet, like giant leaps above in terms of our ability to manipulate our environment. We're not like anything else. Now, if we start seeing them, you know, if they're like hovering over Los Angeles and they're undescribable and they rocket off into insane speeds and smaller crafts come out of the mothership. And if that kind of shit happens, that that would get real <laughs> weird. That would get real weird real quick. And that could lead to chaos. <laughs> that could absolutely lead to chaos. And if we somehow or another had proof that, you know, maybe we are some sort of a science project or some product of genetic engineering or maybe the... The human farm thing is real, that they, they literally created us to try to get us to do things here or to try to recreate souls, which is like a very bizarre thought, you know, that well, the soul is a thing that you, we a carry commodity. around. And, a and commodity. And that there's some sort of value to having so many souls. This is my gateway drug into UFOs was John Lear. And first time I sit down with him, you know, he's like got this big cigar and he's looking at me and he's like... We're all property. We're property. You know, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he, and he was talking about how the aliens saw us as kind of like a wine and our bodies are containers and our souls are being matured as like a commodity. Matured, like is a soul of an intelligent person more valuable than the soul of a dummy? What, what does that mean in terms of like, aging our souls maturing our souls maybe through experience you know like hardship experience love joy that like maybe wow. I, i'm just talking crazy right now but this is some I, I can do the john lear john would say every experience you have in life is what makes your soul mature from your joy and your love to your hate and your anger live without envy hate or greed that's my john lear wow impression. Yeah, he well, was it makes sense if your soul is ultimately a representation of who you are and how you stand in life, it would, it would make sense that that would be fortified by your life experiences. And it would make it stronger, like, like everything else. You know, like your life experiences make you wiser. Wouldn't, if the soul's a real thing, 
you know, the more value you put into the world, the, the better you behave, the nicer you are, the more you learn to be honest and truthful, all the different things that we hold up as high qualities for human beings. It would make, a, it would make sense that that would, like, enrich your soul. Mm. You know. That's, uh, I mean, it's a fascinating idea, but what's terrifying is that if we're a commodity, then, you know, we're like beef cows that are eating all the grass that we want because it's valuable for them to get fat. You know, that the, the chaos on this, on this planet is actually engineered to ensure more rich souls. You guys should talk about that. Yeah, I, he likes I, I know some people that, that uh, have been pretty far up the food chain that believe that, that, uh, that there is mass manipulation of human affairs uh, on a global scale um, for reasons that we can't understand. And mass manipulation by humans or non-humans? Non-humans. Uh, manipulating humans by non-humans to do things that uh, they want us to do. There are some like what kind of things specifically? War, for War. example. Really? Uh, there's a, what's it called, The Gods of Eden, a guy named William Bramley, an attorney, sets out to write a book about the causes of war. And everywhere he goes in throughout human history, he finds evidence of some kind of a exterior manipulation of human affairs that they somehow benefit from us killing each other on a massive scale. William Bramley, Gods of Eden. And what... What is the speculation? Like, what could it be that they would ben? How would they benefit? Does I, it, does I, it maybe it's souls. Maybe releasing souls so that they can recycle them. I, I don't know. Uh, it's been twenty five years since I read that book, but it's worth a read. Hey, one thing is though. Look, man, our souls about our souls and stuff like that. You got to think, man. This, 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 this is our. You got to think, man. We got to think a lot deeper. For some people that just don't understand this, like, um, you are not the body. You're not the body at all. You are the thing controlling the body. Energy can't be created or destroyed, right? So you were always here. You were always. Now you're aware of your consciousness here. You're here to work on some things, but are they out here soul harvesting though? We got to think about that. Do y'all think they're harvesting souls? Uh, you know, energy, energy can't be created or destroyed. Are they trying to, is this just something that we're missing? Let us know in the comments down below. You know what I'm saying? Your opinions, your thoughts, your research, everything. Let us know. You know, it's even more weird is if you take a picture of a one dollar bill on the back. It looks like an alien. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, you actually well you turn the you turn the contrast all the way up. And yeah, the contrast reveals an alien head and the face, the eyes, everything. It's kinda it's kinda genius. What's in your pocket? Yeah. Roswell. Oh, uh, here's a question. If there's not any, you know, intervention by the aliens or the people, mm -hmm. you know, there is this power and there's people in control. If we don't fix this ourselves, mm -hmm. is there going to be any kind of intervention from, from up there if we continue to destroy the earth as, as we are? Well, that's what I spoke to a moment ago. I think that there are two clocks ticking. One is operations within the constitutional government of the United States uh, that are not going to put up with this any further uh, more than another six to nine months. The other is the fact that these extraterrestrial civilizations cannot afford for this progression of technology being deployed against them. These have been rever much of it's been reverse engineered from the ET vehicles, right? And so at a certain point, where do they have to do something to protect other places? Because the, there's a universal principle of self-defense. So far, we've just been cruising along, getting away with this foolish and childish behavior. But uh, I can't give you a timeline on that. But I think that, I, I honestly, from what I've heard uh, from very senior intelligence sources inside the so-called illegal operations, is that it's thought that it would not be able to go on beyond 2026. So maybe within three years. Badger 24. A global event will alter the course of mankind's future. The world will stand witness to a massive alien invasion. Thousands of projected holographic alien warships 
Congress will blanket the skies, sending people into a global panic. Real military crafts within the Holocaust will inflict actual damage to the surrounding areas to sell the game. As we Yo, that, that, that clip right there was so choppy and messed up, though, but it's so necessary, though. You know how they was talking about the blue beam situation? Yeah, they're going to be, I mean, if, if if they were to do that, they would have to use real, like, you know, weapons to make it real, though, real talk. What is this or what type of creature are they pulling out of the ocean? At first glance, it looks pure white. One guy's holding a foot and the other guy seems to drop a fin. I'm not sure what type of animal this is or person. Let me know. Leave in the comments. Unanswered universe. It looked like that lizard that was on the push-ups at the top of the mountain, right? Bitch, <laughs> what? Hey, what the fuck? Right. What the fuck? He can't fuck? even get his camera on it, bro. Hey, I ain't gonna hold you. How many how many of y'all seen that last clip right there? Like something like it. I, I got videos that I'm that I ain't gonna be showing y'all. I had to surf through the ones I was gonna show y'all last night, but uh, I got videos that show that type of stuff, like the flashlight in the sky type thing. is is weird. It's been a bunch of weird stuff going on, especially in the middle of nowhere where they feel like they can't be seen. What that means Crazy. is the food scarcity and starvation we're facing that goes away very quickly when, in, in a twenty year period. Here's your your typical street in your neighborhood, anywhere in the world. And as we bring these technologies out, the grid comes down. We don't need it anymore. When there's a snowstorm or hurricane or whatever, you don't lose power because you're not dependent on a grid that's going to be torn down by ice and snow and wind. You don't need wires. You know all these wires, the clutter of wires, you don't need them because every device will have its own source of energy. This could have been done decades ago. Crazy. As we bring these out, all these freeways will be replaced. All the lines and power lines will go away. We can float above the surface. And in every city in the world, we're going to see this transformation. Every village in the world. And then we have these cities, you know, eventually where you're just floating. There are, there are guided pathways. You know, the ground is pristine. And then we're going out into space. So everyone remember where our destiny is. Our destiny is not just Earth, it's the whole cosmos. How is that going to be possible? The only way we're allowed to go outside our solar system is if we become a peaceful civilization. Otherwise, it's locked down. You know, we are considered a planet that is da dangerous and armed. Well, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, they be saying on TV, bro. Like, they, they so quick to say that some, some, somebody that committed a crime is a thug, man. That's, is that how the galaxy looks at us, man? Are we the crazy thugs? <laughs> That's wild, bro. That's wild. I don't want to be viewed like that. How many of y'all want to be viewed like that? The 10% is killing us. Hey, hey, hey. But we're going we gonna to have to get it together here, man. You know? We, we did the People can actually watch this footage and believe it's real. So tell me, everybody, why haven't we been back? I can go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, right. destroyed that technology. And it's a painful process to build it back again. Now, I want you to think about the absolute crazy amount of progression there has been in the last 50 years with technology. It's a painful process to build this again. Is that foil? Let's not forget the phone call transmitted from the moon to the president. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. 
that's the most telling part to me because you can't even put film through certain scanners at the airport without destroying it. But you could transmit all the way from the moon to the earth through the Van Allen radiation belt. But I know people actually believe we didn't go to the moon. Hey, look, man, the map don't be mapping, G. We have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. India just made history by becoming the fourth nation to successfully land a spacecraft on the moon. Why is it so awesome? While they are the fourth nation to explore the moon's surface, they are first to reach the lunar south pole. The Indian Space Research Organization maneuvered its Chandrayaan-2 Vikram lander out of orbit and attempted the challenging landing in the uncharted south pole. While the lander malfunctioned in the final moments, the ambitious mission demonstrates India's prowess in space exploration. The South Pole is scientifically valuable, containing craters with traces of lunar ice. This water ice could provide resources for future human outposts on the moon. Landing on the rugged, mountainous South Pole is an engineering feat accomplished by only one other nation, China. India's mission showcases the country's technological advancement and cements its place among the new spacefaring nations blazing trails on the lunar frontier. want to know what's even more crazy about that though they got a series based on uh it's it's on netflix it's about water being on the moon and they sent uh they was doing experiments with the water but the water was like the water was killing people you know but it was one girl that was immune well she wasn't really immune which what what happened was they was make they was cloning her and she got a used to the water it didn't kill her it just transformed her into like something i guess more something that could withstand living on the moon and that's what they was trying to manipulate and make the whole time but it's just interesting it's a cool it's a cool it's a cool tv series i'll find it if y'all want to just look up the summary of what i gave y'all y'all find it y'all know i'll be remembering the names of these damn things but it's pretty dope though it's cool watch the denver airport undergrounds are no longer a mystery yes you heard that right about three weeks ago, Jeffrey Donson, a man from Ohio, embarked on a mission to uncover the hidden depths of the airport. Jeffrey knew the existence of five underground levels closed to the public. Determined, he prepared a plan, creating a fake badge and construction vest. From Ohio to the airport staircase, Jeffrey's anticipation grew, but upon reaching the underground levels, a closed door blocked his path. Determined, he decided to wait for the perfect moment when someone would open the door from the inside. Three hours later, and after almost giving up, his persistence paid off as someone finally opened the door from the inside, granting him entry. What Jeffrey discovered inside will leave you speechless. He discovered a vast laboratory with water containers with animals and humans. After a brief exploration, Jeffrey knew it was time to leave. When he got home, he posted pictures of his finding online, but within minutes, they were taken down. Despite numerous attempts to locate Jeffrey for interviews by the media, he vanished without a trace. They call it the K2 Megalith, the giant person underneath the pyramid of the sun in Bosnia. And written on it in runes, it says, we must stand in defense until we can open the gate. They're talking about the Stargate. It's a gigantic crystal that has something to do with this gate that's inside the pyramid of the sun there that activates the Stargate. Again, maybe it's a specific frequency, but they were in some type of a pyramid war, which is noted in these ancient tablets. And at that time they were fighting, they were all trying to get to the Stargate to escape this thing whatever this war was. Listen to this, because this is very fucking wild. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon, and one of the generals called me in. He said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a sec. We've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. I said, we're going to war with Iraq? Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but... We've got a good military and we can take down governments. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk and picked up a piece of paper. He said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs in the Secretary of Defense office today. And he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. It's like insane. How do they not talk about that every day? That's how old the Anunnaki were when they came to deserve. They were one million years ahead of us already. They were already one million years ahead of us when they landed on the Earth 
450 thousand years ago for 250 thousand years they did the work themselves and left us alone they didn't even bother with us and then 200 thousand years ago they decided they were going to mess with us and they started genetically tinkering us and they created the homo sapien sapien which is who we are right now one thing i want to add in there about that is look they, you know, they, it said that they were parade as gods, and that's how they were viewed. But we got to understand this, too. Like, I was trying to hit before. Uh, I had forgot. Energy can't be created or destroyed. So one thing is, man, uh, they're not the creator of your soul. You know what I'm saying? You own that. They only tinker with the genetics of our vessels here on this planet, you know? So they're not your creator, like, oh, this is my God, I need to worship, or anything like that, you know? I'm joined next to Ronald Spalding for holiday favorite, Arlen Kelly. Me and Jennifer are going to join forces for no hope for a holiday favorite. Why would she do that on TV? You know? And, 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 and then, especially next to this man right here, he's supposed to be what? Super, super, super into the church, right? Oh, that's just wild, though. But whatever, though. Why did NASA stop exploring the oceans? So far, humanity has explored less than 5% of our oceans. Beneath the dark waters lie countless mysteries to unravel and many things to discover. They scared. The rumors about the Kraken, the Megalodon, and many other mythical creatures living in the ocean could go from being mere myths to becoming reality. Did NASA discover something that diverted its focus from ocean exploration? In 1958, NASA began exploring the depths of the ocean. Its mission was to map the ocean floor, but on June 28, 1978, this program was abruptly halted. This decision came as a surprise and remains a mystery. NASA immediately shifted its focus to another mission, venturing into space. However, this transition raises questions. What could have caused this sudden change? What truly resides in the depths of the ocean? And the most intriguing question of all, what did NASA discover that was so extraordinary to halt oceanic research? Pretty much those uh, lakes that's at the bottom of the oceans that we had on here. The Barney Hill, Betty and Barney Hill case everyone's heard about, that was one of our anti-gravs making it look like an aliens abducted those, that couple. Now, why would that happen? It's because there's a certain rogue element that want to create the specter of a threat from outer space. Because really what they want to do, they want to create a global totalitarian super state where the people are united against some alien threat. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And that is the big, super big picture that people need to understand. 90 plus percent of everything out there on this subject is some type of disinformation that's being curated for its uh, what's called psychological warfare value. It's a complex problem. And actually, that agenda started in 1953 at least. I have a document from a sitting CI director, Walter Bedell Smith. And, and CI director Smith in 53 describes to the Psychological Strategy Board of the CIA, the psychological warfare value of the UFO subject. And he won't release this because I think he's been threatened, but it's a CIA document from 1985 where it describes the CIA conducting alien abductions in Brazil and Argentina and poor people in remote areas using man-made UFOs. You know what? That sounds very, 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 very familiar to me. That sounds like the same thing that was happening in the jungles out there with the the new alien attacks. What they call them? The the the, the skinwalkers? No, no, the face peelers. Yeah, they call them the face peelers. And the people out there, because one of the aliens had grabbed one of the young girls, and then the villagers all came out and was shooting at them and stuff. Yeah, I remember those videos when I uh had got when I was off of YouTube for a month. You know, I don't, I don't like talk about that, bringing it back up. But when I was off YouTube for a month, that stuff happened, you know, in Peru. I think I think it was in Peru. Uh, 
But yeah, they was in a jungle fighting these things. The, uh, the girl, the, the young girl, she had lacerations on her neck from it and everything. And then they also found a lot of bodies and stuff like that, like in the jungles, with their faces and stuff peeled off to the bone, y'all. I'm telling you, straight up to the bone, they was pulling the bodies out the water. One of the bodies had like a broken shoulder, straight up broken shoulder, and his face was like peeled off. But they, yeah, they call them the face peelers out there. Uh, they said when they were shooting at them, they fell down, but they was getting back up. And they said that they had some type of lights on the bottom of their shoes where, I mean, they was floating in the air and levitating and stuff. They said they didn't run. They just like kind of glid and levitated and stuff. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like, and I remember this movie, it's called Jupiter's Ascending. Y'all, you ever seen that? With the, they had the, you see how they was running on the, you know what I'm saying? They had the little lights on the bottom of their shoes. It sounds like technology. Sounds like technology to me, and it's, you know, they said if you can imagine it, then it's probably true because nothing that we are getting is original. You know what I'm saying? These, 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 it's already out here imprinted into the matrix system. But look, it is what it is, people. We don't have to go super, super deep into that, man. But hopefully, y'all enjoyed this video and y'all here doing your research. Make sure that y'all tune in tomorrow around like 8 30 MST, just for my night owls, and we're gonna get it cracking again. I got a crazy dope live for y'all. That was a good video that we had the other night. Good vibes only, people. Look, man, we, hey, let's try to get 10,000 people. 10,000 people be a part of the 10,000 to be on live man we're gonna have a good time we're gonna kick back and we're gonna chill but look uh i love y'all like i always say spread love because there's too much hate in this world I love you guys see you in the next video and i'm out though blah